Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Wendy and today we are going to do a digital Bible study on Philippians 4, chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. And I'm doing this to show you how I would actually study the Bible if I only had my computer or digital tools and just to show you what I would use in those cases. So today we're going to use just my laptop and the internet <laughs> and see what happens so let us pray dear heavenly father thank you for the gift of technology um but but more so for the precious blood of jesus that we are able to study your word and get to know you through your word and um so that we could be more like jesus this we pray in jesus name amen so like i said today we're doing philippians 4 verses 6 and 7 I have Bible.com open, which is the online version of the YouVersion app. And as you can see up here, it says YouVersion. And then, forgive the dogs barking in the background. Um, <laughs> and I have the Bible Hub app or Bible Hub website open. I believe that also has an app. I have the Crossway website open at ESV.org. And then I have my Google Doc to record any notes so let's start with the oh so we are just so you know we're using the soap bible study method which is scripture observation application and prayer and so we're going to look at this verse in a couple of different translations um thankfully bible.com has parallel mode so that'll be easy to do and we're just going to follow the steps of the soap method. So let's read the scripture first. Philippians 4 verses 6 and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. That is a pretty familiar verse for a lot of people. And I think it's worth examining in this digital Bible study. So, um, oh, we're also going to use the Logos Bible software um, at some point. So if you don't have it, that's okay. You can just use free internet tools for now. Um, but yeah, let's go into parallel mode here and let's bring up the new living translation to see what it reads in that translation and i like parallel mode because as you can see you can see the verses side by side you can see them in different translations and you can also have it read to you out loud um but esv the reason i chose the esv versus the nlt is esv is on the more literal translation of the spectrum nlt is more on the opposite side of the per the translation perspective with regards to it being thought for thought. It's not a paraphrase like the messages, but it's more thought for thought. So it tries to convey the same thing as the ESV, but in a wording you could understand. So the NLT says this, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. I don't know about you, but that sounds <laughs> quite different than the ESV. So seeing multiple translations actually is eye-opening and it can help you understand the text a little bit more. So we are going to copy and paste into our Google Doc. We're going to do the ESV. And we are going to do the NLT. And I have notated that so that when I go back and look at these notes again, I know which is which translation. All right, let's fix this formatting here real quick. 
And so we've written out the scripture. Now, in all honesty, writing out scripture by hand is the best if you can. But like I said, if you can't, if you're working on your phone, working on your laptop, you don't have your notebook with you, whatever, um, you know, this can work as well because you will have it to refer back to. So that's what it says. Do not worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything or don't be anxious about anything. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So I tend to um, read these over and over again just to get a better understanding, like just so it sticks in my heart so that um, I can really commit the verse to memory, um, especially often used verses like this. So while not explicitly in the SOAP method, because the next step would be observation. And the specific question I want you to know is what does this passage say? And so basically, if we don't even go back to that tab, if we just look at what it's saying right here in the document, it's telling me that I should always pray and pray about everything. The passage also tells me, also tells me not to worry or be anxious because I can tell everything to God. Also, let's let my typing catch up with my brain. <laughs> also, I can experience God's peace, which exceeds everything. And it will, oh, well, no, not it, but God will guard my heart and mind. So that's basically what I believe the passage is telling me without going to any word study, without saying, okay, this is what anxious means, or this is what worry means. Like we're not even pulling out the dictionary right now. Um, but if we did want to do that, um, we could, you know, we could go back to the Bible tab and we can see that there are cross references here. Proverbs 16, 3, John 14, 27, Romans 1, 8. Ephesians 3.19. So there are all these cross-references here um, in the ESV version. We could also go over to Bible Hub to get a, um, to get a more in-depth understanding. So right now it's in paragraph mode, but we can look at it verse by verse. Well, no, it's in parallel mode right now. So English version, English standard version versus the new American standard version. So let's go back. We don't need it in parallel mode, but we can highlight, like we can click right here on the number six and just click that and it'll take us straight to verse six. We can listen to it in the audio Bible right on YouTube. And then it'll show us the verse in all these different translations, the audio, the cross-reference, the commentary and the Greek. So right here's the context. So if you wanted to know more about the context, you would read the verses around it. You would also do more study into the book of Philippians, um, why Paul wrote this letter to the church of Philippi and what was the purpose, basically what was the purpose of that particular book. So these are all the things you would see in, um, on the Bible Hub website. And if we click on commentary, we, it'll take us right to Ellicott's commentary for English readers, the pulpit commentary. We can scroll down and we can see the Greek, um, definitions. So there's a lot here on Bible hub. If you want to do a deeper study on esv.org, there's an introduction to the two Philippians. So where this letter falls on the timeline, who wrote it, the theme, the purpose. 
the key themes as it's outlined through the book of Philippians and the setting, including a nice map for you to refer to if, for those of us who like to look at it geographically, um, where was the church at Philippi as opposed to um, other key cities like Thessalonica or Corinth or Ephesus. So those are good resources to look at. I also said that we would look at logos. Um, so we'll look at that in the next section, the application. What does this scripture teach me about God? Because one of the temptations for people is to look at scripture and say, what does this say? What does this tell me? And then stop there. But the question really to ask yourself is, what does this tell you about God? What is scripture revealing about God? Because the Bible is for us, but it is not about us. So that being said, let's take a look at, let's take a look at logos. And we are going to type in Philippians 4, and we'll start it at verse 6. And I have it defaulted to the English Standard Version. So we already know what the English Standard Version says. But what it's giving me first, and, and I told it to do this, I set it up that way, is to give me the Bible knowledge commentary. So if I couldn't figure out just from what the text said about God, I can turn to this commentary right here in Logos and it says, Joy and gentleness accompanied with the awareness of Christ's imminent return should dispel anxiety. Paul's appeal to the Philippians is do not be anxious about anything, but this was not a call to a carefree life. And I think this is very important here to care and be genuinely concerned is one thing to worry is another. Paul and Timothy cared for the people they ministered, yet they retained trust in God. Jesus warned against worry, which obviously eliminates trust in God. And that goes back to Matthew six. Paul exhorted the Philippians to prayer instead of anxiety. Praying with thanksgiving involves trusting God. Four words are used here to describe a believer's communion with God. And I'm not even going to try to pronounce these because I do not know how. Um, but they are Greek words <laughs> and I haven't taken Greek yet. So prayer describes a believer's approach to God. Petition emphasizes requesting an answer to a specific need. Thanksgiving is an attitude of heart which should always accompany one's prayers. Requests speak of definite and specific things asked for. When the exhortations of verses four through six are heeded, the peace of God will flood one's troubled soul. The Lord Jesus Christ is a believer's peace, Ephesians 2, 14. And every child of God has peace with God through justification by faith, Romans 5, 1. But the peace of or from God relates to the inner tranquility of a believer's close walk with God. This peace of God transcends all understanding. That is, it is beyond man's ability to comprehend. This peace guards the believers. Guard, um, also this is the same word that's used in 1 Peter 1.15, translates a military term, which means to protect or garrison by guarding. Like soldiers assigned to watch over a certain area, God's peace garrisons the hearts and minds. That is the emotions and thoughts of God's children. So having read the Bible knowledge commentary on verses six and seven, what does this tell me about God? What is the application here? So it says we are called to do four things, pray, and petition with thanksgiving and make our requests known to God. So if we do those things or when we, not if, but when, when we do these things as a replacement for our fear, God will give us his peace that is already granted through justification by faith. So let me see if I can go back to my Google Doc and put this in, in kind of a, a sentence or two. So when 
we, when I replace worry or anxiety with prayer through supplication, petition, and thanksgiving, and make my requests known to God, his peace will guard my heart and mind because I have been justified through my faith in Jesus Christ. It also tells, it also gives me a promise of God. So I don't know if you caught that, but this is a promise. It also gives me a promise of God. Not that God is a genie granting wishes, but that he has promised his peace, which, which surpasses, surpasses, I can spell, or exceeds my human understanding. So that's how I would do the application section. Um, and again, if you want to go into more commentary, Logos has it. If you want to hit up more internet sources, you could. Um, but this isn't meant to be an exhaustive study. It's really just meant to help you um, really get grounded in what that particular verse or scriptures mean at, um, and what they tell you about God. So with that, let us pray now that we have read the scripture, observed what it says about God, and talked about what it teaches about God. So, dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your promises. Thank you that you are constant, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever, and that you have given us a way to be justified, a way to be redeemed through Jesus, your one and only Son that you loved us so much that you provided a way back to you. Lord, no other religion on this world can claim that. We serve a truly mighty, most high God. Lord, I thank you for your promise of peace. I thank you for your promise of guarding my heart and mind through Christ Jesus. And I thank you for giving me a way to that peace and to always remember to take my worries and concerns and joys and sadness and everything to you. Just like Paul wrote to the church of Philippi that I should not be anxious for anything, but make all my requests known to you. Thank you so much. This we pray, this I pray in Jesus name. Amen. All right. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this kind of digital Bible study. Um, let me know in the comments what you thought, were these tools helpful? Were these websites helpful? Will you try this? Um, I am curious to know what you thought of doing this all digitally, or do you prefer writing by hand? Just, just let me know in the comments. Um, thank you so much for joining me again. My name is Wendy and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos. They come up just about every day and like this video, share it with someone you think it might help. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.